Hello and welcome to This Our Johnny Domino. We're back again. It's a beautiful East Midlands Saturday afternoon and we've got lots to say. So, Steve, last episode, you ended the episode by saying the words, inane rambling about songs you've never heard. And I think that basically sums it up. So I think we're going to just stick with that as a description of what we're doing. Inane Inane, rambling, yes. Inane rambling about songs you've never heard. Beautiful. Mm. The The songs do ramble about, you're quite right. Yes, inane rambling songs that's what we're doing and uh, it's stuff that we recorded a long time ago and we get all kind of emotional and nostalgic about things and i hope you enjoy listening to it you know i was worried the other day actually Mm -hmm. i was a bit worried that it might come across as self-congratulatory i don't think we need to worry about that too much particularly with a couple of the songs that we're going to talk about today Mm -hmm. i like to think we we can be quite distant because it it's a long time ago as you say it's about 30 years some of these songs we recorded so it's yeah like, it's like almost like it's different people that did it that's kind of how i look at it really yeah. and i don't know i don't feel like we've got any great claims to that this is amazing art really i no. think it's just like some of it i think is probably not that good no. uh but I think it's just, it's an excuse to make a podcast, really, and for me and you to spend some time talking about stuff. It's really nice uh, just to talk about music with you, because we don't get a chance very often because life and children and jobs. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, Yeah. so we're not here going, hey, look at us, this is amazing stuff that we did, and we're going to just highlight all this great stuff we did. I do occasionally use the words you know, it's a great song or it's a good drum bit or something. But I don't, I'm not, I don't mean like it's a great song. I just mean it's like it's pretty good for what we did. And, you know, it's like I'm listening back to it, being surprised that there's something quite nice that I'm hearing. That's all. Yeah. Before we get started, we do have some fairly, well, to us it's exciting news. Maybe you will think so too. But we have recently recorded our first Johnny Domino song, for nearly 20 years. I think it's 19 years since we did anything. And it is a a new track that we've recorded for a compilation put out by Artists Against Success. And they're the people that release some of our, in quotation marks, proper albums. And that is called All Goals Achieved, and it's being released on the 31st of July. So by the time this episode lands, it'll have been out for a couple of weeks. I'm genuinely excited about it. Yeah. The guys from the label obviously have been getting in touch with all the people who have released stuff on Artists Against Success, and they got in touch with us, and I've looked in the vaults, and there's some stuff which is okay, but not that interesting, and I just made a good guitar bit, and we recorded it pretty much as we did a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Except not on four-track tape, because unfortunately, the Tascam 424 has been put on the tip yeah i'm excited for people to hear it yeah. and i'm also excited to hear some of the other stuff that's on the uh, compilation really yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be good there's a lot of a uh, lot of names from the past that i remember well so i'm looking forward to what the whole thing sounds like the link to download it um from Bandcamp will be in the show notes but it is available on all the streaming sites like spotify we also need to talk about the fact that um this is an anniversary mm. and to mark that anniversary which anniversary is it steve let's remind me it's the anniversary of us taking the name johnny domino it's our naming anniversary um, yeah we're, we're recording this at the end of july 2023 and in august 1993 that is the month in which we started recording songs under the name of johnny domino so it's yes yeah. 30 years of faffing about and recording bits of music. And to mark that occasion, we're recording this episode slightly differently. Mm. And Steve is actually in the room 
at our mum and dad's house, right? Yeah. Where we where we actually did that first recording, aren't you? It's true. Picking up the vibes. I'm in Studio One, and the ghost of our musical past is just it's just dripping through every pore yeah. and every sinew of my body. You can hear the slight, slight. It sounds slightly shitter. Your microphone. Yeah, well, that's just different because I'm using a different microphone. But uh, I think it fits with the, the whole vibe of those recordings that we recorded it does. on borrowed microphones, borrowed equipment. And the first song we're going to listen to today is one of the first songs we recorded mm. in that first batch of songs, and. All I'm going to say in terms of introducing my thoughts on it, really, is it is the lowest of fires. <laughs> it's a lo-fi theme tune. Okay, stop it now. Stop it. Stop the song. Stop the song. Stop the song. I'm quite happy. Right. To. Okay. I was I was quite enjoying it. Um, I want to suck and I want to blow. Apparently, according to that, and I want to be a Johnny Domino. I want to be a Johnny Domino. So we were setting out our uh, our musical stall. Uh, we were, weren't we? It's like an agenda, really. Yeah. It, so it is very lo-fi, isn't it, Steve, in terms of recording? I like the fact that I think the only way we could get any reverb on your voice was to put your voice through an amplifier. Mm. And I don't know which one it was. It was either a keyboard amp or, mm. or your guitar amp. And the guitar mm. amp is recorded so badly, you can hear the plectrum flicking. Yes, I quite like that. And I like the... Uh, I like the kind of 1990s megaphone distorted vocal sound at the start. Yeah. That's quite good. In a box. What I like next is there's a little high voice man starts singing in the background. He turns up. I, I try and imagine him as a, as a very small man starting to sing in the background. Okay. And then, right, he sings a bit. And then he starts playing the guitar. And he plays this really, really little guitar really fast. That's what it sounds like to me. Ah, the magic of recording technology.
babies with my girl We'll stay high and never Question, is it perhaps more fun sometimes to make music than it is actually to listen to? I was very much thinking that. We were talking about earlier on about us not being self-congratulatory. We're clapping ourselves. We're clapping, <laughs> we're clapping like, ourselves. No, but it's, a, it's a good sound. The high speed clapping ourselves. Yeah, it's a good sound, that, that bit. I'm clapping the, the miniature man that came in and started singing and, and playing the guitar really fast. I can't remember which one of us that was. I think I was playing the guitar, but I don't know who was singing. It was definitely you. Okay. That whole lo-fi thing. Um, I didn't like Beck, you know. Yeah. Beck was like the apex of that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Really. But there were other people doing it. Yeah, but I'd not really heard a huge amount of stuff by them. I'd not heard, as we mentioned before, we'd not heard Guided by Voices. I'd not really heard any Ween. And that is Ween, isn't it, really? Ween-esque. It's Ween-esque. Mm. And not really heard much Seba though. No, uh, they're the kind of the main ones for the kind of lo-fi tape mangling. Yeah. My God, there's so much noise on that track. But I think we like the idea of it. I mean, we obviously heard about the whole lo-fi mm. thing, but we didn't have the internet, so you couldn't like go and like research no. it, right? So you kind of had to just pick up stuff from wherever you could, and so we were kind of just decided to have a go at yeah, it. Yeah, I think a lot of it is. You know, I mentioned it before, the first Palace Brothers album, we were hugely into that. And that just sounded like they recorded it in their house with their mates. And so yeah, I think that was yeah. one of the things we were kind of going for. I listened to that album recently. Actually. Yeah, yeah. Still good. For the first time in ages. First time in ages. And there were a few songs on it that I really, really liked. Mm-hmm. But I didn't, I didn't like all no. of it. I couldn't. I don't think I'd listen to the whole thing again. But there were some really, really good songs on mm. it. Oh, um, I can't. Unfortunately, I can't remember the names of any of them. Riding. Yeah, that one was quite good. That was always a Riding good one. Riding in the cellar song and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. cool. We did actually record an earlier version of this track uh, with our mates John and Albert. I think Albert was in the room rather than doing anything, but John was on the drums and he recorded an epic drum solo as part of it which is probably all you need to hear of that version. Fabulous. Superb. There you go. That was that was super. Right, so that was a song called I Want to Be a Johnny Domino, one of the first songs we ever recorded under the name. <laughs> The next song, Oy. I'm thinking I might kind of hide under the table for this one and perhaps cover my eyes with my fingers. Or your ears. The ears are the problem. This is an interesting one. Right. This song is called Bring a Friend. Now, in mitigation, I'm going to tell you the picture of what I was going for. Okay? Yeah. Tell us the picture and then we'll listen to the actuality. Now, I had left university... And I was working in the local Virgin Megastore. And Mm -hmm. part of that job was you got an amazing discount, uh, like 25% in in my mind. So while I was there, I ordered a lot of music and bought myself a PlayStation, PS1, which was just amazing, game changer. Soul Blade, Soul Blade. (sighs) Yeah. And Crash Bandicoot, Crash Team Racing, oh, and Tomb Raider, gosh. Tomb Raider. Yeah, good game. Let's, let's not get carried away. But go on, carry on. Different, different podcast. Absolutely, that is. different podcast. And one of the things I bought when I was there was the Velvet Underground box set, Peel Slowly and See, that came out around about that time. Five disc set of Velvet Underground stuff. <laughs> um, and my favourite disc was the loaded disc. It was basically it turned loaded into a double album, and I <laughs> loved that. Now, I can't believe where you're going with this because this song, 
that we're going to listen to is is a thousand miles away from anything online. But that's what, that is what I was going for. That is what I was going for in my head. I can't. That's the first time I've ever heard you say that, and I don't. I, I can't quite believe what I'm I hearing. Was go, I was going for a track from Loaded. I was trying to be Sterling Morrison on the guitar playing, right? Uh-huh. That's what I was going for, especially on the solo at the end, because it's pretty standard rock guitar playing. I thought I was being Sterling Morrison. Yeah, okay. I'm so far off the mark. It's unbelievable. And the other thing is, on a previous episode, you talked about how you like the keyboard bass. Oh, no, no, yeah, I do. And I, this has got some good keyboard bass on it. And I, I, that's, I still stand by the keyboard bass, Steve. But, but in terms of your guitar playing, again, just go back to that, right? I never got the Sterling Morrison thing. Yeah. I I thought you were going for kind of Noel Gallagher. That's what it sounds like. No, it doesn't. It doesn't sound like Noel Gallagher, but I think that's what you were going for. What it sounds like to me, get ready for yeah, this. Yeah. Listen to it now with this this next thought in your head. I think this is Lawrence from Felt. Interesting. I don't even think it's that good. In my head, <laughs> it's like it's a recording from the first rehearsal of Shed 7 it's the Milltown Brothers. <laughs> it's Ocean Colour Scene early years. It's River City People. It's it's oh, bands all good stuff. It's bands from the nineties that missed the mark. It's let's hear it. Let's hear it. It's astonishingly bad. Enjoy. Let's hear it. I'm hiding under the table now. to listen to all of this yeah we do we do that keyboard bass I actually like it do you think that's the best thing that's the best thing it is a bit Lawrence from Fowl though isn't it it is
for you i've got to listen to this again when i edit it go on then give us your reaction oh, I've, I've, I've actually given myself a stomach cramp because i'm cringing so much at it you know what though when you listen to um you know loaded mm-hmm. next time i want you to i want you to... to sterling morrison no no just think in wonder at how great it is and you know how musicians kind of can do something quite simple yeah. but it's absolutely fucking amazing yeah. right and it could easily go wrong <laughs> uh, it's so, if it goes one way or the other it's like a very fine line between good and shit it's, and that is definitely on the shit side obviously that's astonishingly but, bad yeah yeah <sighs> when we started talking about this podcast we did say we wanted to cover things like glorious failures. Now that is in no way glorious, but it's a failure. Exactly. We're not. We can't edit edit out the the dodgy stuff. That's the funniest bit. Dodgy. There another one. Add to the list of all these Britpop never words. I've got one more thing to say about that okay. song, which is ridiculous in every sense of the yeah, word. Yeah. But the chorus, right, which I was listening to the other night, mm. um, I'm going to just. Let's gonna deconstruct these okay, lyrics, right? It. See what you see what you think, right? So the words are something like bring a friend, hey, she can come too. Why don't you tell her she can bring a friend? So the scene is, right? I'm talking to a woman. Yes. She's got a friend. Yes. So I'm saying, why don't you bring your friend along? Yes. And then I'm saying, why don't you tell your friend? She can bring a friend. She can bring. Yeah, she can come back. Come back to me, mum and dad's house. So, what I'm suggesting is that I get together with three women, right? So, what what would I even do in that situation, right? With three women, I mean, play bridge. Is uh, you know, we'd probably have a nice meal and we'd have a very nice chat. And then I'd go home, home, to, tra- home to Tracy, probably. Oh, now that nowadays, yeah, <laughs> but, but like <That's> astonishing. <laughs> but like, the, the idea, I don't know what uh, the idea of like, yeah, she can bring her as yeah, well. Yeah. Let's have three, let's have all three of you <laughs> come with me. <laughs> let's have a pie. I mean, it's, a, it's an incredibly tempting <laughs> offer, I'm sure, for, for any young lady <laughs> around town. I do like female company. I do tend to sort of just sit there and listen to what they're talking mm. about, to be honest. Oh man. That was that was that was rough. Yeah. In every sense of the word. Yes. Ridiculous. We got through it though, Steve. We got through it. And uh, I think we can treat ourselves next to something that's not quite as embarrassing, hopefully. The music of a golden age. This is one of my favourite songs that we ever recorded. Is it? It is genuinely one of my favourites. I've been thinking about it quite a bit since we started talking about it, including it on this episode, because I don't know if you remember, I started this recording by recording the acoustic guitar track. And mm-hmm. the acoustic guitar track is very slow and there's not a huge amount going on. And in some sections, it's just one note. But if you remember from watching me record guitar parts, I was never particularly patient with myself. But for some mm. reason with this track, I recorded the whole thing from from Go To Woe as the acoustic guitar track on its own without stopping. And I, I don't know what I was thinking, but I seem to have had 
an idea of what the whole song was going to be before I recorded it, which is mm. really strange. And then we recorded keyboards and drums at the same time. You're playing the drums. I'm playing an organ sound. Mm. And we just stuck a microphone in the middle of the room. So that so that's why that sounds a bit wonky. Also, the guitar is not strictly in tune with the keyboard. So again, it sounds a little bit wonky. Mm. And then I gave myself the the luxury of having two lead guitar tracks at the end. Mm. You sometimes ask me what kind of thing I was going for musically with some of these songs. Mm. This one is is quite clear that I'm I'm getting my Galaxy 500 on. You are you 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 do head into the galaxy at the end. Yeah. We, we t- take off into the galaxy, don't we? We do. We do. I, I, I'm wondering whether we stop this one halfway through. But I kind of don't want to because I want to listen to the whole thing. Okay. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I don't let's know. See how we go. I think the beginning of it is is quite nice because um, it kind of paints a picture, mm. and it sounds like someone lying on the grass. Yeah. The music does, and then the first line is about lying on the grass, and then it goes into an extended footballing metaphor, which is something I have no knowledge of. <laughs> but it is, I think, lyrically, it's really good as well. I, I just like this the whole package of this song. Well, we've gone well into the self congratulatory now, so let's let's have a listen. It's nearly thirty years ago. It's a different person.
didn't stop it, did we? We did not stop it. No, we carried on listening to that one. Yeah. Another prediction of the future in the lyrics there. Oh, yeah. Your children eat my food and run away. Okay. Now, nowadays, someone's children do eat my food, uh, but they don't run away. Okay. They stomp around, they stomp around the kitchen with their hulking frames. <laughs> and some of those children are yours. And some of those children are indeed the fruit of my own loin. So there you go. No, I just, I mean, great drumming by you. Uh, you did. <laughs> great. A great in inverted commas. Right, it's not Ginger Baker, you know, but the fact that you're playing along with an acoustic guitar track and there's no click track recorded on that. So I seem to remember you had a bit of bother trying to stay in time with me. Mm-hmm. I just, I just really like it. I like the lyrics. I like the way you sing. I like the bit in the middle when we rip off a bit of a Who song. Yeah, yeah. And the, t- the guitar does t- kind of take off at the end, doesn't it? And I remember really getting into that guitar part and I'm sort of singing along in the background going, Steve loves the guitar at the and end. I still, right? I still do love the guitar. I still do love the yeah, guitar. Yeah, and you still do love the guitar, right? But the question is, Steve, what kind of love is it? Is it a platonic love? Is it sisterly? It depends. Is, is it kind of sexual? I don't think there's anything platonic about that guitar solo. No, I don't think so. But it's not I It's not a, so. like Prince, because Prince is, is not a platonic guitar player. But no. there's something, as we mentioned, I'm very much being Dean Wareham in my own head. Mm. There's a bit at the end of it, and I go, we don't know what we're doing it for. That's the last lyric. I like that as well. We don't know what we're doing it for. Yeah. We didn't know what we were doing it for, did we, really? And it's carried on to this day. We don't know what we're doing this for. No, we're just doing it because we're doing it. We're just doing it. Do you want to say anything about Galaxy 500? I love Galaxy 500. Me too. I did. I still love them. Do you remember when we, we? Do you remember when we almost tried to meet them, but we were too scared to talk to them? I got them to sign my ticket when I saw them. Did you? No, we saw them at the uh, the when they played with the Sundays at Trent Poly. Yes. Well, they played with the Sundays, but the Sundays Harriet from the Sundays had a, had a cold. So she got to the end of the first line of the first song and had to stop. But yeah. by that point, I wasn't that bothered because I'd seen Galaxy 500. Yeah, me, me neither. Yeah. I didn't even. I did really like the Sundays, but I was quite happy anyway. Yeah, they were. It goes back to something that Tom said in the bonus episode where he said he was wearing a Green Day T-shirt and somebody went to talk to him. In my first week at college, I was in my communication studies A level group mm. and the guy opposite me was wearing a butthole surface t-shirt so i made a comment mm. and then we became friends for a bit i think his name was matt yeah yeah we did tapes for each other because that's what he did and his tape had some butthole surface on it and some pussy galore and a couple of tracks from the first galaxy 500 album which mm. um had, had come out that year 1989 and at that point i was listening to stuff where it was all about pushing back the boundaries of what music can be and Sonic Youth reinventing the guitar and the idea of listening to some music by these people just playing simple chords like a G to a C to a D was completely against everything that I believed in. But the two songs that he he copied for me, I absolutely loved and I went out and bought the album. The, The next chance I possibly had and... You know, it basically made me realise that you didn't have to reinvent the guitar to write a song. No, it's a it's a wonderful mm. album that Galaxy Five Hundred today. Yeah, yeah, it? very good album. I mean, they're they're all amazing, but yeah, today was very special. And mm. um, <laughs> clearly, I was trying to be Dean Wareham on that guitar yeah. part. So. You, you you were complaining earlier before we recorded that there wasn't enough jeopardy in this episode because in terms of choosing the, the best song to go on the compilation tape, there's not enough tension. But I think we can we can just carry on the conceit, I guess. I think we should carry on. Steve, which Steve, which one do you think should be on the compilation tape? Well, as much as I enjoyed listening to Bring a Friend, mm-hmm. I didn't enjoy listening to Bring a Friend. I endured it. It made me laugh. It really did make me laugh. I was in hysterics. Well, I really hope it's made other people laugh. But yeah, for me, it's um, clearly 
from the way we've been talking about it. Uh, it's the music mm -hmm. of a golden age. And I think the next time yeah. we record, we're going to need to choose two good songs and have a rubbish one in the middle. And then we'll have... What? So we have, so we have a kind of a proper face-off. A proper face-off. And, oh, yeah. and not do a cop-out where we go, well, let's just put both of them through. So we're going to put... On the next one, we're going to put two on that we actually think are really good. Yes. Okay. That's the only way we can do let's it. Do, That's the only way let's we can try do it. it. Let's so, try it. See what that, see what happens. There might be... Yeah. might have an argument. It might be actual fisticuffs. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. Right, I want to do a new section at the end. Okay. Right. The new section is, why is I Love LA by Randy Newman a great song? Is, are we going to do this at the end of every episode? Yeah. We're going to talk about I Love LA by Randy yeah. Newman. Can I tell you why it's, why it's my, a, good, a great song? I've got two, I've yeah, got two reasons why it's a great song this week. Go on. Number one, because it was music written specifically to fit the 1980s music video genre specifically written for that when you listen to it and you can get into that middle section you can actually hear the jump cuts and the video effects right okay. and number two people think it's a really positive song about la but it's completely sarcastic about the whole value system of la and hollywood there you go wow are you telling me that randy newman wrote a song where people misunderstood the lyrics shocker there you go that, that is an absolute shocking shocking revelation that's the end of my section thank you i don't know how to follow that thank you very much for listening to this episode of the podcast uh, if you are subscribed and following us in your podcast player of choice thank you very much if not please like and subscribe wherever you are listening right now if you enjoy the podcast and you think somebody else would like it please pass it on to them. There are links to relatively interesting material that we've discussed in the show notes, including, and this is a very 1990s thing for us to do, after spending weeks trying to find a home for a web page for this podcast, we've gone all the way back, not quite to GeoCities level, but we have got a blog. We have. Uh, where we share videos and various material mm. that we talk about in the episode. I might start putting some other stuff on the blog as well. Go crazy. I might put some Randy Newman stuff on there. Yeah, and do follow us on Instagram because the Instagram channel is beautifully curated by my dear brother Giles. Well, there's some good pictures, I think. Yeah, so thank you for listening. It's been It's been a pleasure again. Steve, thank you very much, and come back again, hopefully. <laughs>